It feels kind of weird. <laughs> Okay, Council, it is seven o'clock. I call this meeting to order. Will everyone please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Welcome to our first meeting in 2022. Um, we'll go ahead and start. The first item we have is the roll call. Everyone could sign in. Just tap it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Got one more, huh? Okay, and then, okay, Ms. Lachelle. Okay, <laughs> it just turned off. Okay, well, I'll tell you what, you can do a verbal roll call if you like. Oh, there, we go. So if you could speak into the mic, there you go. Good job. So, so all counselors present with Councillor Carson um, requesting to be to participate remotely. So, but we are not but, seeing him on Zoom at this point in time. Okay, we'll, we'll keep moving. All right, thank you so very much. That brings us to the next item on the, on the agenda is the agenda approval. Mayor, sorry to interrupt. Um, it, it does appear Michael Carson is present now on Zoom. Okay, all right. So um, the next item on the agenda is the agenda approval. Councilor uh, Riego. Motion to approve the agenda is presented. Second. We have a motion. Second. Any further discussion? <laughs> if not, please start voting. Okay, Ms. Lachelle. And Councilor Carson, what is your vote? Yes. Motion carried unanimously. Okay, thank you. That brings us to the next item on the agenda. Uh, we have citizen comments. This is the segment of the agenda where we have uh, any citizens who are in the audience who would like to make a comment. We ask that you come up to the podium and um, make your comments. I do ask that you end your comments uh, at the three minute, by the three minute mark. If you're still talking at the three minute mark, I will politely ask you to uh, end at that particular time. I don't see anyone in the audience uh, today here uh, physically, so we'll go ahead and uh, open it up for anyone who's on Zoom who would like to participate, please raise your hand. Um, you can raise your hand by using the raise hand feature at the bottom of the uh, screen, and uh, we will recognize you and give you an opportunity to participate. So we ask that you raise your hand right now if you would like to make any comments if you are on Zoom. And if you are calling in by phone, you can dial star nine and that'll um, raise your hand as well. Thank you. I don't see any hands raised. Do you see any hands raised? I do not. All right, thank you. So since there's no, there are no hands raised, we'll go ahead and close the citizen comment segment. 
and come down to the next item on the agenda, which is, which is consent calendar A. Mayor, I move that we approve consent calendar A. I second. Okay, we have a motion, we have a second. Any further discussion? None, please start voting. My vote is yes. <clears throat> motion carried unanimously. Okay, thank you so very much. That brings us to the next item on the agenda under regular business. Um, city clerk, uh, municipal court section. Uh, we're gonna talk about the selection of the mayor pro tem. Okay, so councilor policy establish, establishes that the mayor pro tem be selected at the first meeting in January following the city's general election for a two term of two years. Um, a paper ballot method has been traditionally used to select the mayor pro tem. After you discuss who is interested, then you can vote on the ballot that's been provided for you. Okay, thank you. So what we're gonna do is just open it up for some discussion. Um, right now, I know there are a couple of council, three council members uh, who have some comments and maybe some others. So I'll start off, who was first? I couldn't tell. Okay, Councilor Vigil. Thank you, Mayor. Um, me being currently the mayor pro tem, I want to continue the tradition set by Ms. Hensley two years ago about giving it up and letting someone else take it over. So uh, I will not look for that. Okay, thank you, uh, Councilor Vigil. And we wanna thank you for your service over these past two years. You helped out quite a bit. You showed up to some events. We really appreciate that. And also you helped out a lot in the COVID when I was having some IT uh, issues uh, wherever I was at the time. So thank you for your help and your service. We really appreciate everything you've done. Okay, you're welcome. Okay, Councilor Daniel. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I have been serving for six years now um, and I am interested in Mayor Pro Tem. Um, Councilor Griego and I have had some conversation. Um, he is planning not to run for us another term after this one is over in two years. And we were wondering, and I am okay with this, and I think if the rest of council is, where if we did a one-year pro, mayor pro tem term, if you would so elect me, um, and then he could do the second year. Um, that's a thought I am comfortable with that with as long as Councilor Griego has served. Um, also with the interest in having serve as mayor pro tem as well, I would like to um, serve us in that capacity. Um, I am not sure about Councillor Carson or Councillor Woodward. I haven't talked to either one of them if they're interested, um, but that is something that Councillor Griego and I have talked about, and I am comfortable with that if the team is. Okay. Thank you, uh, Councillor Daniel. Councillor Griego? Yes, Mayor, uh, and I, I want to thank uh, Christina uh, for even thinking, for even listening, you know, because I guess, like she said, this is going to be my last term, and uh, for her to uh, to share that with me, it's, it's, it's you know, it's great. If, if, if council doesn't have a heartburn with it, you know, council has heartburn, then, then uh, I would just step back and let her have it because I, I think she should be the mayor pro tem. And I had a chance to speak with uh, both uh, Eric and uh, Holly about it. And the way it's stated, it's, it's not really where you have to be the same person for the whole two years. So it can be split up, I guess. So. All right, Councilor Griego. Before I go to Zoom, I just want to oh, Councilor Hensley, and then we'll we'll go to Zoom after this. So I won't be going back and forth. Go ahead. I was just going to say I really do like that idea of having the one-year term for uh, Councilor Daniel, and then the other for Gr Councilor Griego uh, to end his how many years? Forty, 40, 40 years. So it'd be a great way. So and I think it honors both, and I, I like the idea that it passes from one to the other. Okay. Um, before I go to Zoom, uh, anyone else here have any comments right now before we go to Zoom? Then we'll come back for comments again, okay? Uh, Council Carson? Um, I would like to also run for Mayor Pro Temp. Uh, so I, well, I'm just put that out there. I don't know what the challenge would be in, in the scenario they were just speaking of. Um, on a lighter note, I don't believe Charlie won't run again. Uh, I think he's just trying to pull our leg. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, I would hope he run again. Charlie's a very effective and, and great counselor. But uh, yeah, I would I would put in 
for that position. So I guess let's just see how that goes. Because okay. I haven't had, I haven't talked or had conversations with anybody about it. I just, uh, I'll just take my shot at it. And if, if I get it good, and I would be more than happy to, to help and to fill that role when you're not available. So uh, yeah, I would, I would put in for that. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Carson. Um, so it appears like we have two options. Option one would be um, a combination where uh, Councillor Daniel and Councillor Griego is, is, is uh, mayor, their mayor pro tem, and then Councillor Carson is running for mayor pro tem. So on this ballot here that we have, um, I think we could distinguish that by checking the boxes that way. Is that clear with everyone? I'm sorry, Mayor. Um, so would it, I think it might make sense and I don't know. And I was going to ask Councillor Carson for clarification if he would be interested in doing the same thing that I would be okay with or if he wants the full two years. Oh, we can't hear you, Councillor. I'm, uh, I'm fine with that. I mean, I'd just as soon let Charlie have the, the year at the first, I, is it two more years, two years that you, it'll be before you have to run, right? So the way it um, would look, <clears throat> Councilor Carson, is it would be one of us for this first year, so for 2022, and then Councilor Griego for 2023, and he'd run, or we'd run, the rest of us, whoever is running, would run in 20, but we would only serve for one year, and he would serve the second year of the two-year term. If we're okay with that, then all we have to do is vote for Councilor Carson or myself versus trying to figure out where Councillor Griego fits in that. But I don't want to put that on you if that's not okay with you, Councillor Carson. Yeah, that's fine. I have no issues with that. Okay, that's even clear. Thank you. All right, good deal. So uh, we have our ballots here. Um, let's get them turned in. While council is voting, I'll just remind Councillor Carson, your hand is still raised if you want to lower it. Council, I haven't seen what your ballots look like, but given Councillor Daniel's latest question, I think we can take it that if nobody put Councillor Griego on their ballot, that means that everybody assumes that Councillor Griego is going to be year two of a split term. And uh, so unless anybody has any objection to that assumption, that's the way we'll go. No, that's I think that's what we all uh, understand. Thank you, uh, Mr. Suizo. Uh, Councillor Carson, I assume. Councillor Carson, I'm assuming you voted for yourself. I'm not at liberty to discuss that right now. I did email you the ballot. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did vote for myself. I have six votes for Councillor um, Daniel and one for Councillor Carson. Okay, so any other comments on this part? Are we okay to move forward, uh, Mr. Suizo, since we have it established now that uh, Councillor Daniel um, won and Councillor Grego is going to be Mayor Pro Tem in the following year? That's correct, Mayor. Okay. All right, thank you, Council. We'll move on down to the congratulations. I just wanted um, to thank, thank you, team. I appreciate that a lot. I'm looking forward. You're welcome. And I'd also like to thank the Council for just understanding and stuff. And Carson, I'm not going to run again, I promise you. <laughs> okay, and, and thank, thank you to all of you who um, decided to uh, throw your names in the hat and um, looking forward to working closely with everyone. Okay. All right, that brings us to the next item on the agenda uh, under human resources. 
first reading of ordinance number 1-2022, an ordinance amending the established pay plan for the city officers and employees. Thank you, Mayor. This is a little bit of some housekeeping. Um, as we worked on the new pay plan for um, beginning in 2022, we knew most likely that the minimum wage was going to go up. And so the pay plan that council adopted created enough distance between some of those pay grades to make sure that when it does go up, we don't have to shift the whole thing like what we've had to do in the past. So now that the state has determined what the new minimum wage is, there is just a few positions we need to bring up a little bit, not very many, and it doesn't impact any other part of the pay plan. The un only other item that's addressed is on the original pay plan, we forgot to include that new police apprentice position. So we obviously put that back in at the, the level it was meant to be at when council approved it. So really kind of just some housekeeping items. Okay, thank you. Councilor Pijo and then Councilor Daniel. If there's no discussion, I move that we approve on first reading ordinance number 1-2022 and set for a public hearing on January 19th at 7 p.m. or soon thereafter. I, I will second, but I do have a comment there after. Yeah. Okay, you, want, you, uh, you have a second. We have a motion, we have a second. Go ahead and make your comments. So have we looked at what it would do to our pay plan if we raised our bottom salaries more than minimum wage so we don't have to do these adjustments like this every year if we change that scale at all? So the they created a slightly different pay plan. So what used to be our lower levels are higher. Um, and then they put in a lower level. That's for those that are not as regular. Um, type of situation. So that created even more distance between what used to be the lowest level and what is minimum wage. So there's actually quite a bit of distance there. Okay. So this is really for like temporary seasonal employee kinds of things. And not even all of them. Okay. It's, perfect. yeah, just a, sm a small handful. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Everybody's good. So we have a motion. We have a second. No further discussion. Start voting, please. Okay. Councillor Carson, your vote? Yes. Motion carried unanimously. Okay, thank you. That brings us down, believe it or not, to committee reports. Do we have any uh, committee reports? Anybody? None? Okay. All right, move on down to staff announcements. Well, yeah. if we're going to be going that fast. Yeah. Um, Harry did share with me, um, you might remember, it was probably eight or 10 months ago, we had a work session regarding streetlights. Um, we did put in that information with Excel. We've received word that they are getting closer to maybe putting in some of those streetlights that we've requested. So I didn't want anyone to think that that had fallen off the radar. Um, staff was very timely in getting that information into the Excel system. Um, I think they're supposed to be out staking and then hopefully putting in some of those lights. So that still is moving forward. I wanted to do just a little bit of some reminders. We do have a work session next week. Um, so that is an off Wednesday. It's six o'clock here at City Hall. Um, we're gonna do just a brief overview of the new budget software and then spend more time on some recommended zoning map changes. And um, since we couldn't with the holidays squeeze in the planning commission ahead of time, we will be inviting them to that work session next week as well. And then on January 13th is the public trails meeting um, where Andy's group will be receiving information on feedback for the location of different trails and amenities and, and a bridge and, and that kind of stuff. And um, I think the mayor might be talking to you about the, the Rio Frio Ice Fest coming up January 28th and if there's gonna be a competition for the plunge, but I don't wanna steal any thunder from him. Um, the only other item we wanted to cover from a staff perspective is obviously last week um, was a little interesting with the power outage. Um, it took a lot of us by surprise. Um, just wanted to talk a little bit about that situation, some lessons learned and some conversations that we had tonight as well and probably continued conversations going forward. 
um, from a from a city perspective, we did not have any official notice that this was going to happen. Um, additionally, as the event was occurring, getting information that was reliable on how long it was going to last was was not easy either. Frankly, we were relying on what people were posting on Facebook, which is not a good situation. Um, you know, I think you were seeing a lot of what that was, was, you know, it should only be an hour. It might be some rolling for the next eight, six to eight hours, some things like that. Um, we within the city had some challenges in that we realized our wells were not on generators. And usually if you have one part of town go out, you still have wells in the other part of town. But when you have something as widespread as this, it took out all but one of our wells. So that is something looking forward. We are going to look at rectifying. We're gonna be pursuing some grants um, and, and see if we can look at staging in some, some generators for our wells, because that's obviously a big deal. The other thing is um, if we were gonna open a warming shelter, I'm not sure if the National Guard was available and if they had backup. Um, City Hall would have been, um, there's a question on if our generator was working or not, but we also could have gathered some generators for the rec center, um, which is in our emergency plan, what is supposed to be a, a warming shelter or a shelter during an emergency event. The um, power backup project that we are partnering with Excel on is not a generator. It's kind of a storage from the solar power and, and may run for as long as three hours which obviously is not a, a perfect solution. So we will also be looking at a generator for the rec center as well for, for a more permanent solution beyond that partnership with Excel. Because three hours, if we had um, a more long-term situation, wouldn't be sufficient. And so we are gonna be pursuing those. We also are gonna probably be having communications from a staff perspective of, you know, when were we notified of certain things? Were we being notified by the appropriate people? Um, were we getting communication out? That kind of thing as well. So we'll be doing, you know, our little look back and, and see what we could do better, as well as working with the county and other emergency response personnel in the Valley. We're still a little unclear of when people and who was notified and, and those types of things. So we're trying to track that down. Um, you may have seen some emails at Excel and Representative Valdez held a town hall this evening. Several of us participated in that. I think it's clear to us that Excel did not understand how um, confusing the communication was that was being put out. Um, so some continued discussions there I think would be very positive. I think there is also from talking to Ashley after that town hall, some assumptions that information was getting sent out that was not um, type of situation. And so we'll continue to have those discussions. What was explained in regards to why it had to impact here was essentially, um, and I'm not an expert, so I can't second guess some of this, but what was presented from Excel was that one of the main presser or for the gas that created the pressure within the gas was located in Boulder and it was in the direct line of the fire. And when that started to be at risk and they needed to shut it down, that meant for that line that was through the Western part, not the Eastern part, I have no idea if there's other connections there or anything like that, they needed to conserve gas or else all of it would have gone down and then every pilot light goes out and, and all of that. And so that's why they turned off the electricity is so then people wouldn't be using the gas. Um, so there wasn't an issue with the electricity that was a strategic call by them. One of the comments they had, um, because the question was, when was the decision made to do this? Um, I don't know if it's their official time, but their initial response was sometime around five or 5.30. So obviously it's a little disappointing maybe that there wasn't more pre-notification before the six o'clock time. Um, but I don't know if that's their official stance or not. So there's just some continued conversation to have there. I also wanted to share with them how frustrating it was and, and our city attorney from a, from a, a, a customer perspective definitely shared his concerns as well on um, 
on what it was like from a customer perspective and the type of information that was being sent out. And, and so we want our community to know that we were definitely communicating. So not only was it disappointing from an official city perspective as we tried to plan on opening a warming shelter and what those needs are, but the, the fear honestly, that was in our community and not knowing where sometimes I think most people could understand there's a big issue going on. They're having to make some tough calls, but the, the lack of information is what is maybe the, the point of contention. And so we're trying to make sure that's communicated as well. And so we look forward to continued conversations with Excel in that manner. Um, I know some of our neighboring communities were looking at opening warming shelters when it was anticipated to just be a couple hours. That's not normally um, what's done from an emergency management perspective when you're looking at use of resources and calling in staff and having to pull those resources together. Um, I will tell you unequivocally, the county emergency manager and myself were in preparation of where we were gonna go and getting things lined up if it was going to extend past 11 o'clock. Um, and that is a, you know, a more normal response to an extended power outage under these circumstances. And so, you know, I, I hate that maybe some people have different expectations out there, but when you're looking at what is appropriate use of resources, you're looking at some different things like that. And so with that, I don't have anything else to add from a staff update. Okay, we'll have a, thank you Heather for the update and um, <clears throat> Councilor Hensley have a couple comments to you. I just have a question. You mentioned the 13th and I guess I didn't have that on my calendar. So will you tell me again what the 13th is? Um, it's not something you have to attend. It is just something we wanted to make sure you're aware of. And so the consultant that Andy is working with to really gather public input on our trail system and what our priorities should be is doing a public outreach. And so that's at 5.30 p.m. and it's, it's a virtual outreach. Um, Andy, I'm sure we can probably get an email out with more information. Yeah, we can send another I must, email. I must have missed it, but, and I may have erased it because I had a marketing board that night and so maybe thought I couldn't do it. So but thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, Councilor Grego. I had one comment on the Excel bill. Uh, we had family and friends that were on oxygen that had to scramble to find liquid oxygen just to keep going. And my brother-in-law, you, you know, it was very, very tough, you know, and not, not to even know when it was coming back and where to go get the, the oxygen. It, it, it was just chaos, you know. So I think we need to, the representative here from Excel needs to come up and do some explanation or do something because I, if this happens again, this, it's crazy, you know. And, and, and um, Council Carson has his hand raised too, but go ahead and respond if anyone had any response to that. I don't have a response. Um, we'll be having continued conversations with, with Ashley and I can share. I'll pass that along. Thank you, uh, Councilor Griegel, for bringing it up. Councilor Carson? Um, in regards to that, to the power outage, you know, from a, a logistical and, and a flow standpoint, the emergency as it was, I can kind of understand why a call like that would have been made by Excel on the fly. It doesn't explain it doesn't help the chaos that it caused but on that evening i got a couple calls immediately about you know the situation well not immediately about an hour after and so i took a drive in response to a couple of the people that called me and i'd really like to understand you know not right now but if we can talk about this or put it on the radar as to why uh in, in Ward 4, as far as I could tell, and part of Ward 3 up towards Main Street, there was not a single street light, a single light on. And I understand the way the grids are separated, but north of Main, there was tons of lights on. And so from an infrastructure standpoint, I'd like to understand um, what can be done in the future to, to help with this issue. Because, I mean, I drove around for a while that night and and during the, the heaviest part or the, you know, the middle part of this blackout, there were several lights on north of Main Street and on Main Street and at City Hall and all down Main Street and, and up some of the side streets and not emergency lighting. I'm talking uh, public lighting. 
and on like I say in ward four, ward three, all the way the entire wards there was, was there was zero, not you know not even near the rec center or anything. So I'd I'd like to understand that a little better for for future situations as to why or what we could do to have some street lights on in some of these places. I mean there was it was pretty creepy actually, and you know you hit Main Street and it just everything was brightened up. And so I'd really like to understand that. I had some people that were pretty concerned. I had several calls about people with oxygen. Uh, I had some family members as well on oxygen that were, they were on the east side of town. So their power was in and out the whole time. They had several instances where it would come on and go back off. And again, in Ward 4 and this side of, of uh, 285 in Ward 3, there was nothing, not a single street light. And so my concern is, or my, I guess my, uh, my want is that if we can pull that off on some street lights on Main Street and upper in the in the other two wards up north, uh, I think we should be able to have the same thing occur in some of the parts of the third and fourth ward as well, because it was pretty, pretty scary. Even walking around out there, it was just uh, it was pitch black. I, I was uh, pretty freaked out by it. So if you guys could enlighten us on that in the future, I'd really appreciate that. Ever. Thank you. On and so thank you, Councillor Carson. So that is actually a question that was brought up during the meeting with Excel tonight on why some parts of the community had power and some parts didn't. And the Excel representatives didn't seem to fully understand that some parts had it and didn't have it and why. And so they are, they're going to look into that. Um, I will assure you, though, um, that there were significant parts of the community north of Main Street that did not have power either. Um, although the parts, including the hospital, um, but there, the parts that did seem to have power were in the areas as you described. So we have no idea. Um, and I just wanna make sure from uh, people understanding what control the city has and don't have as they're listening to this, this isn't something like the city had anything to do with on what where there's electricity, where there wasn't. And I can't really look into making sure some street lights are on or some street lights are not on other than passing along those concerns to Excel. Okay. Thank you, I Thank appreciate you. that. Cause that, I understand that's all we can do and we have no control over that. Uh, but again, there's somebody does, somebody can fix it somewhere or, or adjust that. Um, so I'd appreciate some sort of input on that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, um, Councillor Woolward. So I can shed a little bit of light on on why there was power on in this area of town and Main Street when uh, when the Abbeys were building out Hobby Town. Um, an Excel worker told us that the the downtown area and the area of town that Michael that, that Carson is talking about is on a different grid, be mainly primarily because of all the businesses on Main Street, um, especially the restaurants and bars. Um, with all their walk-in coolers and all the equipment that it takes to run restaurants and the bars, they keep that area of town on a separate grid just in case of a major power outage like we had. Um, you know, for, so, for example, our restaurant, with what we had in our walk-in cooler and the loss in revenue, if we would have been without electricity for much, we weren't with, without electricity, but had we had to go through the night without electricity, it probably would have cost us about 25000 So they take a look at that and, and figure up all the restaurants in the downtown area, and that's one of the primary reasons why we're on it, why they're why that area of town's on a separate grid. It seems we need to make them aware of where the hospital's at then from a similar yeah. consideration. Okay, so it sounds like we're gonna have a lot more further discussion with Excel um, throughout the year. So we'll keep everybody updated. All right, thanks. Okay. Since there are no more, no more uh, staff announcements, it's gonna bring us down to the uh, liquor licensing. This is a consent calendar B. Uh, so all we need is a, a motion uh, and a second. Miss? So moved. Second. Okay, we have a motion. Second. Any further discussion? Okay, B start voting. I think we need, okay, all right. Council My vote is yes. Yes. 
Motion carried six to one. Oh, okay. 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 Councillor Daniel had the no vote. Okay. All right. Thank you. That brings us down uh, to council comments. If we would, I'll let Councillor Carson start first since he's on Zoom and his hand is raised under Councillor Comment. Councillor Carson. Um. I apologize for not being there tonight. I'm recovering from a, a sickness uh, and I did not feel comfortable exposing anyone. Um, just wanna say thank you guys for, for this last year and, and holding it together. I'm talking to council and staff uh, and I just wanna wish everyone a, a good new year and hopefully this one's better than the last two and we can move forward and have some more uh, positive things happen in this, in this year. Um, it was the last rough couple last years. So I just wanted to wish everyone a happy new year and uh, tell everybody kudos on making it through the blackout of 2021. Uh, <laughs> it was interesting. And on a positive note, uh, we have snow. You know, we didn't have snow or water the entire year last year. It was very dry, very parched. And day one, we had snow. So I, I see that as a huge blessing. So I just want to wish everyone a happy new year and, uh, Extend my apologies apologies for not not being there tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Carson. Okay, so what I'll do now is I'll recognize everyone who have their mic on. We'll start off with um, Councilor Daniel, then Councilor Griego. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I also wanted to tell everyone Happy New Year. I'm really looking forward to 2022 and hopefully it being a little bit smoother. That's going to be the the goal. Um, and I wanted to say a special thank you to Rachel and Harry for helping me at the end of last meeting. So appreciate them a lot. Um, I'm also really thankful to the team um, for being able to support the mayor as mayor pro tem. So thank you for that this evening. I appreciate that. Um, I did want to let everyone know that you probably know that Dave Mize uh, passed away in December and his funeral was over um, this past Monday. It was on the third and the city sent a beautiful arrangement of flowers. And I just wanna say thank you to the clerk's office and Holly, Michelle. Um, his family was very supportive. They know how much Alamosa meant to Dave. Um, anybody who worked with him on our team knows how amazing he was. Um, there will be a celebration of life on January 22nd at the Boys and Girls Club. Um, Times are still being determined because I haven't had a chance to think about that with Aaron yet, but it'll be probably in the early afternoon if you're planning. Um, and when we were at the funeral in, in Kansas, they had given some opportunity for people who attended to donate to causes Dave um, cared about. And one of them was the Boys and Girls Club of the San Luis Valley. And they raised over $1,200 and gave that money to me to bring back. Um, and so I'll be delivering that to the Boys and Girls Club this week. And I just, that shows how much impact one person can have in Alamosa in a completely different state in a whole nother town that is not much smaller than Alamosa. They only have 5,000 people in Wamigo. And um, it was really touching to see how he impacted us. And we were able to share those stories and to share the stories about how he impacted them. And so I just wanna say thank you to the city and the team and um, that he will be very much missed, but also that people from Kansas who don't even know us, but knew Dave donated to our Boys and Girls Club. And I think that's really special. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Daniel. Councillor Griego. I wanted to make some comments on, uh, on the St. Benedict uh, uh, homeless shelter out there. Uh, I know we've been having some problems with the uh, plugins and stuff like that. And I know there, some of the people have been breaking the rules out there and stuff and it's been changed. But I, I've been I've been out there several times trying to help people move into other housing and and uh, I wish there was a way that we could have prolonged maybe not taking that electricity out of there until maybe March because right now it's what eight below ten below out there and it just blew my mind there there are so many there's, there's a lot of women out there you know? and I'm sure that we in, in our families. 
you know, we've touched, you know, homelessness ourselves, you know, and for them to go to, you know, and I'm, I'm not saying that we should provide something where people are going to continue coming over there, but there's something we should be able to do to, to help. These are human beings we're talking about. You know, I've seen people that have pets that have better, uh, better uh, living situations, you know, and I, there's something I wish we, we should have held back a little bit and, and left that alone now. I know I've, I've, the chief's been going out there and unplugging those things, and I'm, I'm sure after he leaves, they plug it back in, you know. But as cold as it is out there, it's it's you know, and I, those people, they they probably, you know, some of them went went down the wrong path, you know. But still, I think we should have some kind of compassion and and, and uh, see what we can do. And I I know that some of the shelters I think are. How do we get to those shelters and say, hey, help these people out, you know, because nobody's going out there to help them. So I just thought I'd throw that out and see if maybe I know we don't want to build upon something where people are going to continue going there and and maybe using it for what it's being used now. So I just thought I'd throw that comment out there, see if what we could do. So I'll just do a Thank reminder you, of when council was deciding to open St. Benedict's and the discussion that council had on what services should be offered, um, what the rules should be, all of that was council decided. Um, additionally, um, any modifications have been brought before council before we've allowed it. So for example, um, when there was a group wanting to do the huts, um, even though it's not, funding that the city put into it if we wanted to allow that. And, and I know um, it's been probably almost two years at this point that we've had St. Benedict's um, and maybe the feeling of what council wants that to look like is evolving. Um, I know when we first opened it, it was so we can enforce the no camping, um, but also that short term need from a COVID perspective um, of all the restaurants or restrooms were closed and the buses weren't running and the shelter was closed. I mean, it was a very significant in, um, situation, which we've evolved mostly past from, yes, we still have COVID, but restrooms are now back open and, and some the shelters back open, buses are running, those types of things. Um, but the balancing act that, that council seemed focused on was, um, this isn't necessarily solving all the issues. That's part of what the homeless coalition is, is to talk about where are their gaps, who should be filling those gaps. It may not necessarily be the city um, and, and having those discussions type of thing. And that the creation of St. Benedict's was not a silver bullet that was suddenly going to be the city providing services that it had not historically provided. And so that's why the rules very clearly state that they all sign um, that they are not supposed to be running electrical. That's only to charge the mobile devices. And I know um, for those individuals who, who work with the homeless, this is very hard um, and, and trying to, to figure that out. They did not have electrical when they had when they were camping along the river. This wasn't meant to change that. But if I, um, I was planning at a future meeting, maybe in February for council to discuss if another group wanted to pay to put in electricity and to pay for it, if you wanted to allow that. Um, but since it's all along been a council decision and it seems to be this balancing act, I, I wanted it to be council's decision. And so until that time, we've been enforcing it as is. Um, if you want me to bring it before you for discussion at the next meeting, I can. I was planning on potentially at the retreat, but I can definitely bring it before council at the next meeting to talk about electricity if you want. And I totally agree with you, uh, city manager. I, I know the rules were set and everything, but it's just, and I did, uh, I was approached by people saying that they want to do exactly what you're just saying here, where they want to pay for the electricity and find a way how to put it in there and, and at no expense to the city. So I, I'd, li I'd like the sooner the better to, to bring that to council and uh, see if we can do something. It's just, you know, just to, to leave it the way it is, I, I, you know, and I know they broke the rules, but still, we're still talking about human beings, you know, so, but I would appreciate if we could bring that forward. Thank you. Okay. Um, 
Any other comments on that, Ms. Uh, Brooks, before we go to uh, Ms. Hensley? If you're, if you're gonna bring it forward, we'll just talk about it then. Sure. And, and so is there anyone opposed to me having this on the January 19th meeting? But if you're gonna put it on a meeting where you have enough time to hear from the other parties who are wanting to pay uh, for the utility, so we don't have to be discussing this I don't again. think there needs to be much no. research. Essentially, yeah. the question is, is council interested in allowing another person or entity to pay okay. for electricity? Okay. Um, and so, and then they can do the research on grants that are available and what's involved and, and that kind of stuff. But the core question doesn't require much research. Okay, so everybody's agree with that? I guess I okay. Say. Okay, Councilor Hensley. Sorry, Thank I guess you. what I would say is where I, I sort of have, um, so if that doesn't work or where my thought process is, is really not so much providing electricity to them on a regular basis, and I'm not necessarily opposed or whatever, but what the concern for me is when it does get to a certain temperature. And I guess my thought was even is if we had the electrical and that it's off unless it hits whatever we decide the threshold is, you know, from a humane standpoint, is that sort of my thought process is, um, I don't know if last year, I feel, I feel like it's already getting colder than it was last year, but maybe it's just what I'm feeling. Um, but that idea there that, uh, you know, sort of some solution to help when it gets to a certain temperature. Okay, Councilor Daniel. Thank you. And, and I would just add that I, I agree with you, Councilor Hensley, that if, if we were going to do it, I think that would make sense. I struggle with the city adding this amenity and we can have this conversation on the 19th, um, but I, or whatever day it is. The 19th. Um, I struggle with that because of the way we set up the camp and that we have a shelter in our community that people can now go to and we are no longer in the same place we were in with COVID. We are in still a hard place with COVID, but we're not in the same exact place we were. And so I, I struggle with us doing that a little bit just because of the reasoning behind why we set up the camp. Um, but I am not opposed at all to another entity coming in and supplying that and supporting that and managing it. So I would like it to not take more city resources to manage and monitor as we're looking at those things. Um, I think that that's, that's important to me as we look at those discussions and as people come to the table. And I guess, so I, if you want to say one thing to that, is that I agree with you totally, except from what I've heard is the shelter is full. And that, and I could be wrong, but I've heard that the shelter is full and that there's a waiting list. And so that for me is, so I agree, if the shelter had room, then I'd be totally 100%, but from what I've understood is that it's full. I also don't know how many individuals are from here versus we've always been offering bus tickets to if they are from a different location or then get services in a different community as well. Excuse me, Mayor. Yeah. Oh, there you go, Council Carson. Um, real quick, I, I I agree with with people's points there. Everybody's bringing up some valid points. Uh, I I was going to say something to the effect of what Councilor Hensley just said. I don't know that the the shelter can currently accommodate everybody that's that's out there. I mean, I I literally had a guy in my neighborhood last night, and I saw him today, so I asked him. He walked pretty much all night long. So it wouldn't freeze. I saw him walk by my house twice last night. And so um, I don't, I don't really want to, to put city resources or electricity. Uh, like Councillor Daniel said, I don't want to make that an amenity that we're offering again steadily. But I would think that uh, Heather, if, if it's possible, this entity that's bringing up the, the, the donation of electricity, there's kind of cheaper and more temporary ways that we can, you know, help people from freezing and, and put something like that out at the camp. I mean, there are like 50,000 BTU heaters for a couple hundred bucks, propane heaters that we could, that this entity could stick out there for a while on these really cold nights. And then we pull them, you know, or that entity pulls them out. Cause I, I do believe that as a structure, we should stay as close to our original model as possible. Um, and if there are entities that want to keep people from freezing, those are really easy ways of doing that without having to turn that electricity on or keep it on and 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 allowing individuals to to then control that because at the same time you got to think about this if, if they're in a bad position anyway and, and they're freezing and they don't have money but barely to maybe buy a jacket how do they get a heater where do they get an extension cord you know are they going to be able to supply that you that piece of hardware to keep themselves from freezing and again I, i'm not saying we should give it to them but 
I think there's some temporary things that whoever the outside entity is can do in a, in a quicker fashion and a more temporary fashion that we can set there, keep people from freezing and then pull when, when the temperatures are back to a more humane place. Um, but I think we should look at that too, instead of just turning the electricity back on at any threshold. Uh, there's much easier ways to do it. And I'm sure everybody knows what I'm talking about, big outdoor patio heaters or things like that, that groups of people can gather around and not freeze to death. So I'm just putting that out there. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Councilor Carson. So we'll, we'll discuss this further at uh, the next meeting. Okay, you good, everybody? All right, good deal. All right, um, anyone else have any? Um, okay, Councilor Vio? No, any other comments? All right, well, I'll just wrap things up. Once again, Happy New Year to everyone. Looking forward to uh, 2022 and what it's going to bring. Hoping that it brings a lot of joy, peace, and happiness uh, for all of us and all of the people here in our community. I want to thank Councillor V. Hill for his service as Mayor Pro Tem over these uh, past two years. He stepped up and helped out quite a bit uh, when needed, and I really appreciate that. And it means a lot when you know you have someone who's a Mayor Pro Tem and you have to miss or either if uh, something goes wrong technology-wise, we have someone to step up so that meetings can continue to move forward. So really appreciate your service over the past two years. I want to congratulate Councillor Daniel and Councillor uh, Riego uh, on being the new Mayor Pro Tems. You'll now have people coming up to you and saying, what in the world is a Mayor Pro Tem? Um, and um, usually I just say it's Vice Mayor. That's what, that's what it is uh, for the most part. But congratulations to you two. And, Looking forward to working with you all as well. Uh, the other thing is, um, Councillor Daniel briefly um, mentioned Mr. David Mines. I, I, I still remember his jolly smile and all of the uh, fundraising efforts at the Boys and Girls Club. He used to be the tax man, like the mean old tax man without a mean bone in his body. Uh, he will be missed. Um, and finally, I just want to bring up uh, just to let all of the city staff know, I don't know if you all know, but on January the 28th, we're going to have like a polar plunge. And um, if any of you all want to challenge council up here, I'm quite sure uh, several of us can do a match. I know I'm stepping up to the plate to jump into the polar plunge. Uh, Dalton has already reached out to me and uh, I gave him my full support. So I just want to encourage you all too to do the same. Um, Councillor, I mean, Ms. Brooks had a few words. I know she wants to let you all know right now that she is going to join us. Go ahead. Well, we've already talked about it at staff and, and remembered the last time we had this challenge, we won. So <laughs> no, you didn't. we're up for another challenge. <laughs> well, Councillor Carson showed up and jumped in twice. That, so that, that, she, that I steal that. You guys did not win. <laughs> so. Okay, all right. So, Council, we're going to show up in, uh, in huge numbers. <laughs> on the 28th and and participate okay <laughs> but but and also on a serious note but there are several other activities that go along go on that weekend as well just showing up and participating as a council that that really means a lot the barn fire is a, a nice event as well as the the 5k and the other activities that they have planned so i encourage everyone to show up uh that weekend and help out um whenever possible that's all I have for tonight. Um, we are going to try to set the tone to where we have a lot more meetings like this. <laughs> so since we don't have any other further comments, this meeting is adjourned, everybody. Good job. Good night, everyone. Good night, Council Carson.
it shouldn't take long because it looks like someone's already filled it out. Oh, okay. Um, Good, how are you? 